The title of my talk is KAB21 Korean Step Forward to Supercomputer CPU. I'm also one director of AI Processor Research Department in ETRI, Republic of Korea. ETRI is mostly government funded research institute, and our department is designing the processors for artificial intelligence applications as well as high performance computing applications. The design goal of AB21, the Korean supercomputer processor named Artificial Brain 21, AB21, includes the performance, power, and the application software infrastructure. KAB21 is, as far as we know, the first CPU that is designed under the support of the Korean government as the supercomputer CPU area. The performance target that we have in mind is to have 2.5 improvement compared to that of the previous accelerators or CPUs in the previous uh, supercomputer system. We also wanted to have 60% power reduction by applying our proprieta proprietary power gating architecture enhanced by the internal power and temperature management software and also the detailed clock scale, clock, uh, scale scheduling and management of double precision plotting point unit accelerator named XPU. The software infrastructure includes high performance computing as well as the artificial intelligence applications. So we also need to support OpenCL or OpenMP, which is industry standard uh, APIs. And we also wanted to support PyTorch or TensorFlow, which is a most widely known AI training framework. If you look into the previous system fabric of the supercomputer system, then you can easily find out that there are mostly two types of supercomputer system fabric to integrate multiple CPUs or the accelerators. The first one is the system, which is composed of the CPU and the accelerator chips such as GPU. In this system, CPUs and GPUs are connected by the PCI Express bus. It is widely known that the performance of this kind of system is limited by the limited data bandwidth which is provided by the PCI Express bus. Because the PCI Express has the limited number of channels, uh, although each channel is high speed, the, the overall system, the overall chip bandwidth is also limited by the bandwidth of the PCI Express. This kind of system fabric comes from the chip size limitation, industrial structure, semiconductor chip availability, or other several reasons. The second type fabric is the chip which includes the CPU cores as well as the accelerators, such as the second one chip in the figure. In this type of system, a single chip includes the processor cores as well as the accelerators in a single semiconductor die. This architecture can reduce the memory bottleneck between the core and the memory. However, the memory bandwidth limit limitation uh, caused by the external memory components still remains, but it is the same as the first uh, type of the system. Surprisingly, the recent processor, which achieved the world number one performance in the target system, is composed only of uh, only by only of the tens of the CPU cores in a single die without accelerators. For each of the system that I have just mentioned, the peak double precision floating point performance of a single chip or the whole system is shown here in the table. And it is plotted as a blue line in the graph. The number of legs comprising a supercomputer system is also shown in the graph and the leg scale double precision floating point 
performance is shown as red line in the graph. As you see, the trend shown in the graph shows that the scale up of the single chip performance is inevitable for future supercomputer CPUs. The scale up of a single chip performance enables low power chip and also the low power system. And we can also integrate more and more chips in the lag, increasing the overall system performance. And we can also reduce the power consumed for cooling the system. Also, the integration of CPUs and accelerators in a single chip gives much more data bandwidth between CPU and accelerators, which can tentatively remove the data bandwidth bottleneck. If you see the performance of the lag, it constantly increases recently, except the second uh, supercomputer system. We may see that the performance scale up of a single CPU is essential in higher performance of a single lag and the overall system performance. With this trend in mind, and uh, remember that the trend at this time is to increase the performance of a single CPU by integrating multiple CPU cores as well as the accelerators, uh, where the each accelerator component is programmable by the OpenCL or the OpenMP, uh, which are the industry standard software programming models. So we have set our our final uh, performance goal of uh, KAB21 as 16 teraflops per CPU, uh, which is only achieved by um, by only the array of the uh, acceleration cores in the XPU. So the overall performance of a single leg will reach 1600 teraflops. So we can integrate many many CPUs in a single leg and then by simply uh, expanding the number of legs so we can achieve the exascale supercomputer in the future. This is the conceptual block diagram of KAB21. It is composed of the processor die and multiple HPM2E dies for expanding the uh, bandwidth of the memory read and write. And we also have DDR5 for increasing the capacity of memory storage. So the HPM2E and the processor die is integrated by the interposer scheme. And the memory structure that we have in mind is a uh, hierarchical one, which is composed of HPM and DDR5. We, in the processor die, we integrate the GEUS, which is a top performance subscale core provided by ARM. And we have XPU, many thread scalable cores for artificial intelligence and high performance computing. It is basically uh, the matrix multiplication accelerators providing 16 teraflops per core. And we provide HPM plus DDL, which is Korean world class memory technology. The block diagram of KAB21 is shown in the slide. In the center of the slide, we can see the backbone network of the KAB21, the coherent mesh network provided by ARM, and we have uh, many XPs in the CMN. The GEOS cores are at the upper and bottom side, and we also have other blocks for increasing the data bandwidth inside of the chip. So we and we also have uh, MMU 600 blocks, which is connected to the accelerator named XPU. Each uh, sub block of the XPU is called XEMC. Each of uh, XEMC has internal caches, load store units, integer units, floating point units and multiple programmable cores 
which can execute multiple threads simultaneously. There is also the array of plotting point double precision units inside of it. And it also has a internal DMA block, which can communicate with the CMN through the MMU 600. So the, integration, the integrated block of uh, XEMC and GEOS core comprises a single tile and there are four tiles in the whole processor die. At the bottom side, we can see the PCI Express Gen 5 interfaces, which can act as a normal PCI Express interface, as well as the interface for uh, interchip communication network. And we also have uh, DDR controllers and HPM controllers around the die. So, the basic architecture of KAB21 is the integration of the CPU cores as well as the accelerators, especially for the for increasing the overall double precision plotting point performance. And this is the this is for increasing the performance as well as decreasing the power consumption, while uh, while achieving the overall performance that we have initially uh, targeted for. The initial flow planning of KAB21 is shown in the slide. The GEO scores are at the upper and bottom side, but actually they are located at the center of the chip, and the CMN is distributed throughout the chip. And the controllers are around the processor core, processor core, and the PCI Express interface is at the top and bottom side of the chip. And this is the currently uh, maximum size of the uh, size of the die, which is permitted at the fabrication. So the final layout will be done in the next year. The CMN is provided by ARM and we, the, the team in the ATRI, is designing the cross-point structure of CMN. The current CMN structure has 10 cross-point by 11 cross-point, so we have 110 cross-point in the chip. And the GEOS cores are located at the center of the chip and the XPU, which is comp composed of the many uh, XEMC cores, are distributed around the GEOS cores, which are centered in the chip. The PCI Express controllers, DDR controllers, HPM controllers are distributed around the chip so that we can optimize the inter-core performance. And the GEOS core is executing the operating system and it can commence it can sense the commands to the XEMC cores so that the X, each of the XEMC core can execute the kernel compiled by the OpenCL kernel software and the compiler the GEOS core executes the OpenCL APIs to control the operation of XEMC cores. The, the overall uh, number of uh, XEMC cores uh, plotting, point, num plotting point units has around the 16K plotting point adders and multipliers. The design target of KAB21 would be the Korean supercomputer CPU actually is the first Korean supercomputer CPU targeting the application of high performance computing as well as artificial intelligence. So this is as this is the first uh, Korean supercomputer CPU, we are still struggling to design the overall architecture uh, in, co in cooperation with ARM. So the final chip would be available at the end of the next year. This is the end of my talk. Thank you.